Don't worry, Marvel and Disney. All of the MCU failures since phases four and five began have been redeemed, according to Screen Rant. And of course, I'm going to explain to the audience and Screen Rant everything that's wrong with this article. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Make sure to join us every Sunday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern right here for the live show. All right. I know what everybody's saying right now. I know what everybody's thinking. Valiant, what the hell are you doing? Talking about a Screen Rant article, it's freaking Screen Rant. No, I get that. I know it's Screen Rant. And normally, I would never address Screen Rant's stuff because it's just typically silly, especially when it comes to actual box office coverage. But I couldn't pass this one up because it's just too good of a teachable moment to our viewers out there to share out with their friends and family about how the box office works and all of our new viewers especially now 60,000 subscribers to this channel. So let's talk about what Screen Rant is actually trying to get across here. Sony's newest Marvel movie, talking about Madam Web starring Dakota Johnson, movie bomb redeems every, every MCU box office failure by $100 million. Madam Web's lackluster box office performance sheds light on the challenges facing the Sony Spider-Man universe. With diminishing returns on recent releases, Sony's upcoming films like Craven the Hunter faced increased scrutiny. Even some of the MCU's modest box office results still outperform Madam Web, putting its results into wider context. Now, of course, Screen Rant is failing to capture some relevant data here, which is of no surprise. Madam Web saw a decidedly lackluster box office result, which has some surprisingly positive implications for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, really? Madam Web released on Feb 14th, 2024, and went on to earn less than $100 million worldwide due to its unpopular reception, making it one of the most unpopular live-action Spider-Man movies of all time. Yes, that's true, and that's Sony's fault. They are trying to mine the Spider-Man rights they have down to the last piece of coal. But the reality is the only thing about the Spider-Man part of the franchise that Sony has the film and television rights to is, well, Spider-Man himself. That's it. Everything else can go by the wayside, save perhaps for Venom, which has been very popular. Some would consider him Spider-Man's biggest nemesis, and he has been very popular with Tom Hardy playing that role in the last couple of films. But one thing that is absolutely indisputable at this point in time is the fact that female-led superhero movies just frankly go nowhere, at least outside of being bolstered on both sides by strong franchises like Marvel, at least up until recently. Madam Web's financial failure makes the MCU's box office woes look less startling. Its box office was just shy of $98 million, putting it far below even the worst performing MCU film, which of course was The Marvels, the most recent MCU film, I might add, with a box office haul of almost, but not quite of course, $200 million. Before that was The Incredible Hulk from 2008, the second film in the MCU, which earned $265 million. These are only two films in the MCU to fall below $300 million, with the third lowest grossing movie being Captain America, the first Avenger in 2011, earning $370 million. First of all, Screen Rant, if you're going to use the Hulk in Captain America from 13 years ago as comparative metrics for this, then you might want to actually update folks with 2024 ticket price data. See that $265 million The Hulk from 2012? That would be somewhere closer to $600 million today, if not more. And when it comes to Captain America, the first Avenger, that movie would be closer to $750 to $800 million today, 
if we just simply copied the number of tickets sold with the prices they had back in 2011 and 2012 to the ticket prices that we're all enjoying now in 2024. But if you just think logically for a few seconds, the comparison here is even more egregious. I do understand what Screen Rant is trying to clickbait with junk articles like this and trying to say how this redeems the MCU's failures. And I mean abysmal failures. But they also seem to fail to mention that, well, Spider-Man No Way Home, which was a Sony release at nearly $2 billion in a global box office haul just in the last two to three years, has been by far and away the biggest thing that has been at least tacitly attached to the MCU by way of Disney not distributing it, and instead Sony in this case, that they've had since 2019's Endgame. Yes, Sony has been stumbling with these things, but the other part of the equation that Screen Rant, of course, leaves out, or perhaps doesn't even understand, is that, well, there's a few financial differences here between things like the Marvels and Madam Web. With just shy of $98 million in box office, 43.8 coming from the US and Canada, and about 54 million coming from the international side, we can reasonably assume the actual take home, that is, the money that netted back from theaters once the theaters took their cut both in the US and Canada and abroad, was probably somewhere around $45 million. And if you look down here, the listed production budget for this film, $80 million. Now let's stop right there for a minute. So they racked up about $98 million. They took home about $45, $46 million of that against an $80 million budget. And for a moment, let's forget the actual marketing costs. I want you to compare that to actual Spider-Man films, where they spend two to $300 million dollars to produce those films in tandem with Disney and Marvel Studios. As you can see, Sony actually practices some restraint here, knowing that we can get away with spending $300 million to make a Spider-Man film because the box office and the commercial financial potential for that kind of movie warrants it. Whereas if we're going to try to do an off-brand character that very few people really understand that is female-led, we are frankly running a high risk so we can't allow the studio to spend two to three hundred million dollars to make a Madam Web film. We've got to really rein it in. Hell, they even do that with the Venom movies starring Tom Hardy that make eight hundred million dollars. So Screen Rant thinks this bails out the Marvels somehow that raked in one hundred and ninety nine million. There's a few problems with this. First of all, this movie was essentially a sequel to a $1.1 billion performance from just five years ago, or really four and a half years ago, maybe, at the time this film came out. Now, we told you way back when, the only reason that Captain Marvel did what it did in the box office is because it was sandwiched in between Infinity War and Endgame, and just like Black Panther in 2018, leading into Infinity War, this movie was billed as a you-have-to-go-see-it film in order to get gigged up for Endgame. And that's exactly why it was here. Since then, the character has been defunct. The toy sales were nothing. And there was no reason for Marvel Studios to make another movie featuring this character if they had just actually looked at what the financial data clearly showed before they went into pre-production of the Marvels that came out last year and bombed. But here's the big difference. What was the budget for the Marvels? Well, as of right now on the numbers, it shows still sitting at 274 or 275 million dollars. But of course, that number is not accurate because that number really doesn't include all of the massive reshoots that went into this movie before it came out. We can tell you right now that the Marvel's final tally will come in probably over $300 million. That's right. The Marvel's cost roughly four times what Madam Web did. Now, let's also add in some other very relevant factors to this that we remind folks constantly about other movie studios not named Disney, especially ones like Sony, that have a very lucrative post-theatrical distribution contract for streaming with 
Netflix. That's right, Netflix that pays Sony over the course of several years a billion or billions of dollars to acquire and license all of their content in a pay one window for the first 18 months where it leaves the theater. In this case, Madam Web would be there. So let's go back and talk about that theatrical revenue figure that Madam Web got back. So Madam Web raked in about 98 million and based on the domestic versus international split, probably is taking home somewhere between say 45, maybe as high as 50 million, but I kind of doubt it. But that leaves about a 35 to 40 million dollar gap, maybe somewhere in there for the actual production cost. Well, guess what? Netflix is probably picking that up. In reality, Sony is probably not going to lose a dime on the production of this film. Again, I'm leaving marketing out for right now just for comparative metrics. But let's talk about the Marvels. The Marvels raked in about $200 million globally, and it was more heavily leaning into the international box office. And that international box office, well, the biggest component of that was China. So realistically, the Walt Disney Company would be lucky at this point to see even $100 million actually come back to the Walt Disney Company from theaters. It's probably closer to $90 million given the disparity and the breakdown between domestic, international, and China. That means that before we even add in a dime of marketing cost, the Walt Disney Company may have lost somewhere closer to $200 million on the Marvels, if you can believe it. Now, of course, they'll have some film tax credits that will help mitigate that impact, but the reality is they probably still lost at least around $150 million before it left the theater. That's a huge difference for Madam Web, and yes, even other flops that Sony had like Morbius, because of course, Walt Disney Features don't really go anywhere that generates actual cash flows after they leave the theaters. They go to Disney Plus, where Disney pays itself a check. They move a $20 bill from the right pocket to the left pocket and say, look, here's the streaming revenue. But in reality, it's not at all the same with companies like Sony or companies like Universal and Comcast that actually take their content and license it to third parties that pay them real money coming back from places like Netflix and Amazon. But hey, maybe Screen Rant is just catering to the type of very casual audience that doesn't want to think too much about what they're reading. Certainly, that seems to be the case with their writers. Maybe this is just the kind of stuff that you read while you're going to the bathroom at the airport waiting for a delayed flight. Because if you're going to stamp your name on something like this and try to make this sort of comparison, you might want to actually bring in some relevant data points to it. Because frankly... This is why people really laugh at certain websites. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.